What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Giselle and I'm an ultrasound technologist who lives in Las Vegas and loves all things Disney. And today I have a special video for you guys. It is about the life of a sonographer answering your guys' questions. And surprise, that sonographer is me. And I just want you guys to know that I did an interview with Renee. She is a senior in high school and she is getting ready to graduate soon. She asked me if she could do an interview for one of her projects. And of course I said yes. Yes, and of course she was so kind enough for me to record it for you guys so you guys can hear all about what she had to ask me what I had to answer and I feel like it was a really great interview I think you guys will love to hear what I had to say I had no idea what she was gonna ask me so it's all kind of like just pulled out of my head out of nowhere as fast as I could so if you guys have any other questions comments concerns please don't hesitate to comment them below ask any questions that you have and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos but without further ado it is a little long video but i hope you guys stick around for the whole thing because she asks a ton of great questions i think you guys will love to hear about and lots of advice in there lots of things you want to know about ultrasound so without further ado you guys grab your snacks grab your drinks if you're listening to the video in the car hello drive safely but with that being said let's just get started <laughs> I'm Renee. I'm from Michigan and I live near Detroit. So, yeah. Awesome. awesome. That's so cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Want me to just start asking you my questions? Sure. Yeah. Well, floor is yours. <laughs> so, what is the mission of your company? Um, the mission of our company is basically to help take care of others and be there for patients just like their family. We have a goal to basically like take care of everyone, no matter who you are, to make sure you get quality care and really good patient care. Basically, you can walk in and walk out knowing that you were taken care of. That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> so describe what you do on an average day and your job. So on an average day, you know, when I walk in, there's already a bunch of exams ready to do. We have what's called routines which are exams that are already ordered by a doctor that needs to be done. And then wow. we have stats, which are exams that are orders that are really needed like as soon as possible. So when I walk in, there's routines and stats already on the schedule. And pretty much what we do is because we're a huge hospital, there are so many different towers and it's not like this everywhere, but at ours specifically, we write down our initials on which patients we're going to go do, and we kind of try to stay in the same tower, but we pretty much just grab the paperwork. We check to see the patient's history, if they've had any prior exams, why they're here, and then we just kind of take that stack of paperwork and go scan, scan all day, patient after patient after patient, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's kind of our job is to get as many exams as we can done, you know, you come in there and the list is like at 40 and you try to get, you know, five, six, seven done before you go to lunch. And then you come back from lunch and then you go scan. <laughs> so it's really just like a ton of scanning. Yeah. So I do have a question. So since you work in a hospital, like all of the patients are obviously there. So if you don't get like everyone done, so you would just do it like the next day. Yes. So okay. um, basically you have like shifts between the hospital, like someone comes in the morning then the afternoon and then at mm -hmm. night. So, you know, hospitals run 24 seven. So if, if patients, you know, they're just there, usually in patients, they're just in their room, you know, have other tests, blood work, things like that. If they're not available for you to do their exam, you kind of are just like, okay, we'll come back for you, you know, whenever we can. And you just get to it as soon as you can. Okay. Um, what skills do you feel are necessary to do well in your job? Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> A lot of skills, I think, would be like multitasking, being able to communicate, not just communicating with your coworkers, doctors, nurses, but also communicating with the patients. You have to be able to kind of have like this poker face almost because you're scanning and you're going to be finding abnormal things and you have to yeah. be able to hold yourself together. You can't like tell the patient what you see or what you find and a lot of times they do ask you a mm -hmm. lot of questions and you have to do your best to like think critically and just know okay what can I say in this moment 
because there's a lot of things we can't say as sonographers to the patient. Right. So Cause the doctor, like that's the doctor's job. So yes, we don't get paid as much as doctors. So not a, doctor, <laughs> not a doctor diagnose and let these patients know what's going on, but you know, it's your job to give them compassionate care and be able to like calm their worries as much as you can. I mean, even if you see something abnormal, you have to do your best to like, you know, stay positive. Mm -hmm. You just wait for the doctors to let you know what's going on. Okay. Um, what job and education path have you traveled on in your career? Job and education path. Hmm. So when I graduated, I worked with a small company. It was like a mobile company almost. And we would go to doctor's offices, long-term care facilities. And so I learned a lot of vascular stuff there. Cardiovascular offices, people don't know, but they do their own ultrasounds in their offices. And they can contract other sonographers out there. Some of them get paid per exam. Some get paid per hour. Some of those are four to six hours. So it's kind of more flexible than it is in the hospital. Um, but I did that for a while. And then I also worked at another company, which under an umbrella had multiple hospitals. So essentially what I would do is wherever they needed help, they would put me at that hospital. And wherever I was scheduled, I would just go to whatever hospital needed me. Okay. And then after that, I started working at just like one hospital specifically. Mm -hmm. And then now I work also at an outpatient facility. So there's just like so much opportunity. So many different yeah, Right. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, definitely good. Education wise, you know, sometimes I would just go back to my lab where I learned everything and I would go help and teach them. But eventually, hopefully one day can be able to teach. That's what I want to do. But whereas education wise, you kind of have to like keep up with your continuous, they call them CMEs. Mm -hmm. so continuing education you have to get like these credits you have to take board exams you have to take classes and you have to get 30 of those every three years so that helps you keep up with the education part of ultrasound things are always changing yeah when you go to these events and these seminars they teach you a lot of new technology and things that are coming out and about nowadays um if you had the first part of your life to do over again, what would you do differently regarding education, job preparation, and experiences? <laughs> <laughs> That's a long one. <laughs> Sorry. What I would have done differently, really? I mean, I think I wish I had done more research um, and kind of like realized almost what I was getting myself into because mm -hmm. I went into it blindly. I had no idea. I just kind of like saw a radiology class. Mm -hmm. Fell with ultrasound. I was like, oh, okay, let's just do this. But there's just so much more to ultrasound than people know and think. And, you know, just knowing that, I think I would have much rather been more comfortable if I did more research. I mean, there's a lot of exams and boards and registries and everything's like really confusing, mm -hmm. you know. So if I went into it knowing everything, then I probably wouldn't have been as stressed out. But, you know, I think that when you go into this field, having a passion for it, I think you can just kind of get through life. And, you know, if you're down a path and something happens, you just go another way and try to figure it out. But at the end of the day, I wish that I, I just knew a little bit more about ultrasound because there's just so much more to it yeah. than I knew before. <laughs> and your video is so helpful. So that's so like good that you're trying to help other people like know like kind of what you didn't so that's so good <laughs> I know, it's, it's, really, it's really confusing <laughs> but once yeah. you're here, it makes a lot more sense okay what do you especially like about your job Ooh, especially like <laughs> <laughs> i love everything you know this job i think i graduated in 2017 right so been about, uh, about four years and i still go in there like really enjoying what i do i sometimes still feel like i'm a student like it's kind of hard to believe that i'm still just a sonographer that does things on my own because there's a lot of times where you're going to need help or need somebody to like kind of boost your your confidence almost because there's a lot of times in ultrasound where it's like i don't know is this is this is this real like am i really seeing something am i just making something up because you can make a lot of things in ultrasound but i really love the fact that like it's a continuous learning process i feel like it's not boring at all i think that you know <laughs> every day is different i love meeting new patients you know i love the patients that especially are just so intrigued by what we do because a lot of times they go in there not knowing what's going to happen. And then they, they like get an ultrasound and they're like, wow, they're just like so amazed. So I, I just think the patience itself and then the job itself, like I just love it all so much. It's just, and when you go into something that you like love, it makes work a little bit easier. Yeah. 
So that's why I'm thinking about becoming a sonographer because like, I just love helping people. And I took anatomy and physiology last year and I just loved that class. And I was like so fascinated by like seeing everything and like knowing how everything worked. And I was actually thinking about becoming a nurse, but then I was doing extra research and I was like, wait, this sounds like such a cool job. <laughs> so I'm very excited. <laughs> very cool. I wanted to be a nurse at first too. Yeah. And so going into ultrasound from the knowledge of knowing I want to be a nurse, it kind of takes the notch up a little bit more because now you have more patient care. You want to care about your patients. Yeah. To do this job, you have to be able to care for your patients. And I think just having that foundation and knowing you like anatomy and physiology, <laughs> that's all you need. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good to know. <laughs> you go on the right path, I say. <laughs> okay are there any aspects of your job that you wish you could eliminate if so what are they oh if I could, <laughs> I could say I want to say, well okay so I'll tell you the truth you know the honest truth I mean a lot of times ultrasound it's not magic right like it's not gonna find everything it's not the end all be all you know there's other modalities CAT scan nuclear medicine MRI but you know ultrasound is very easy accessible I mean you there's no radiation so doctors do order a ton of ultrasound exams so you know one of the things is while it's very very busy there's also a lot of unnecessary exams that they order exams that typically aren't needed or the doctors kind of just order them and like when you get into the medical field you know it's a whole it's a whole another story right it's like a whole business part of yeah the field so you know doctors are doing their job and things like that but as a sonographer, there's a ton of things like you, you kind of don't want to waste your time, like trying to do an exam that's kind of unnecessary, but at the same time, you have to do the exam because it's your job. It's to do job. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you kind of just know once you get in the field, you're like, okay, is this exam really, do they really? Uh, yeah. It? But, you know, you do it and it's job security. Another thing is like sometimes patients are just so like, for example, at an outpatient place, sometimes you just get really mad because, you know, they get in there and they don't understand that we have scheduled, like, a patient comes in every 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. If they're late, they kind of push you back because you have scheduled appointments. Mm -hmm. And they get mad but at you, but it's like, but they were late. Oh. You know? And then, or like patients who need their bladder to be full, they come in and their bladder is not full enough for the exam. It's like for pelvic and renal, you mm -hmm. have to have your bladder full. And then they get mad at you because their bladder is not full. Yeah. It's just little tiny details and things that make your job a little bit more stressful than it could be. But it's not like so crazy to where it's like, ah, I don't want to do this job. <laughs> yeah. But there's just little things that make it like kind of stressful in a way. And then so about like the injuries that you can get, I'm sure that's like another part that you wish you could eliminate. Like, do you worry about it often? Or like, I'm sure you know how to like avoid and like know how to place your hand and whatnot. So as far as that goes, um, you know, it's kind of like what they say is inevitable where you're going to be in pain hurting. Mm -hmm. You're constantly mm -hmm. scanning a patient like this. And it's something that you have to really focus on. I I mean, I, for one, like, I know it's a big deal to a lot of people. Like, it's a lot of people's number one to afraid to go into this job because of the musculoskeletal injuries. But if you know that it's there already and it's a thing, there are ways to prevent it. You have to think about what your body's doing. Be mindful about how you're scanning a patient. I mean, like, some of the exams, you know, what they order are, like, really big patients. And you just have to get in there and, like, push really hard and, like, angle and, like, your body sometimes mm -hmm. is in a different position that you didn't even know you could do. <laughs> I found myself in hospitals, like even scanning backwards sometimes or scanning with my left hand. And so, you know, it, it is a really big deal because there's a lot of sonographers who end up with pain, you mm -hmm. know, shoulder pain, back pain, hip pain, wrist pain, you know, arthritis. So of course we would want to eliminate that as much as we can, but it's also very hard when the exam itself is very tech dependent. So if you have a sonographer who doesn't want to work as hard as they can or go above and beyond, yeah, yeah, then that patient doesn't get the results that they need. You know, I mean, there's of course the limitations where you should only push this hard, you know, because you don't want to injure yourself. I mean, sometimes it's just, you can't, you can't get in there, you know, and that's okay. So you have to do what's best for you and your body. 
I mean, I know techs who've been do- who have been doing this for like 20, 30 years. And a lot of them tell me the same thing. Like they stretch every day, you know, before yeah. work, after work, a lot of people are active, you know, and a lot of the, the senior techs, like they also are like, make sure you listen to your body when it's in pain, you know, stop what you're doing, stretch because your body is important. So I don't know how we could eliminate it per se, because once you start scanning, you'll see that it's really hard to adjust your body perfectly for the patient and to make sure you're okay. Like there are so many times where I'm like finagling my wrist. I'm like, I know I shouldn't be doing this right now, but. Like you have to do what's good for you too. So do what's good for you. Do what you can for. Yeah. Okay. What personal qualities are important in this type of career? You have to be able to be kind, Mm -hmm. passionate. You have to actually be, I mean, if you're, you can be a good listener or not, but you have to be able to listen (laughs) because these patients will vent to you. A lot of times the patients are like, you're kind of almost in like a therapy session. Sometimes they just spill out everything that's going on in their life. Uh-huh. It's like scanning them like as much as you want to tell them, oh, I'm sorry, like I, I'm trying to scan you or, you know, things like that or you know, trying to get the best pay, uh, images for your exam. They, they tend to, you know, they're scared. They're worried. They don't know what's happening. So mm-hmm. you just kind of have to be able to listen and just like, mm-hmm, you know, listen to yeah. them, mm-hmm. validation that you're there. for. Them. A lot of times that's what I've come across. So I can't imagine someone going into this field who doesn't like to talking or like listening and being nice. (laughs) Yeah, basically be nice. I mean, it's like customer service. People who are in customer service, that's a great experience because Mm -hmm. you're you're giving customer service to these patients. I personally want to treat all my patients like how I would want me or my family to be treated. Yeah. I think that's really important. How do you see your job changing in the next five to 10 years? I mean, within the last four years, there's all, already been a lot of changes. I feel like machines may get smaller. I mean, they're already pretty small, but I've seen some like handheld probes, like, and they can connect to like a, a phone. I mean, technology is going to change. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to change. And things are going to get just so much better within the next five, 10 years. But I think there's going to be more research able to be done, more statistics and facts coming into play. Mm -hmm. But I think that we're obviously, we're trying, the most important thing is that whole musculoskeletal injury thing, right? A lot of sonographers are on this thing called cap the caseload. And it's kind of like to help bring awareness to the field. I think this field is going to grow so much and people are going to become more aware of it. And I think that with that, a lot of things are going to enhance in the future and like be so much better than they are today. Um, what is the pay range for entry level jobs in this career? And then what would the pay range be after two to three years on the job? Most places, it, so ultrasound is dependent on where you live, like the city. Yeah, like, right. right. Like cost of living. I'd say I can speak for Vegas. A lot of times the starting pay is around 25 to $30 an hour. Uh, I know in like the West Coast and like really big cities on the East Coast, the starting pay can be like $35 to $40 an hour. And then, you know, with two to three years of experience, you should probably get, of course, like maybe two to three more dollars. I think every year, it's kind of interesting because pay raises are usually like 50 cents to a dollar or a little bit more, depending where you live. Like you can get cost of living raise and experience raise, you know, your annual raise. There's some places that do six month raises. So I think that after you get a few years in there, you should get a couple more bucks. And as mm-hmm. you go, you're going to get a couple more bucks. So okay. as long as you know you're starting above above $20, please, anywhere. Just don't accept anything under $20. <laughs> that's, that's, we do so much. And I think sonographers deserve a lot more than what they get. What benefits may employees earn? You kind of touched on it a little bit with like different jobs like or different companies or whatnot like increasing pay but if there's any other ones for most jobs in ultrasound you can have like a 401k which is like the benefits for retirement and then you can have like health insurance so health insurance you know depending on where you work they could give you these options and you can pick from those options so like for example at my hospital they have different tiers of health insurance there's one that's like absolutely free, like you don't have to pay a thing and it comes with your just, it just comes with your job. But mm-hmm. then 
you can do one where you like pay a little bit extra per month for this kind of insurance or like pay a little bit extra for this kind of insurance. So it kind of like they give you your options and you're like, okay, mm -hmm. I like that one. <laughs> what do best? I mean, if you have like a family, if you have a significant other that you want to put on your insurance, those are things you can think about. But really the health insurance, you know, that comes with like dental, vision, <laughs> And then the 401k, those are the top benefits. And then they also have PTO, which is like paid time off. And so as you get more hours in and you work more, you accrue more PTO hours so that when you are off, you're actually getting paid while you're off. Oh, okay. So it's like you, it's like you're getting paid still, even though mm -hmm. you're off. <laughs> so <laughs> you go on vacation and you use your PTO hours. Mm -hmm for those two weeks, then that whole two weeks you're on vacation and you're still getting paid. <laughs> That's <Pretty> nice. <laughs> um, what advice would you give me as I begin my career preparation or search? Mm, advice, yes, because you are, are you graduating soon? Yes. <laughs> Yay, um, I definitely, like you're already starting off really well by doing yeah. research and that's great. Kind of look into, see if you can job shadow somewhere. Have you had an- I have not, but. I, I know, plan on it. <laughs> yeah, I know with everything going on, it's hard right now, but definitely job shadow. Of course, ask, I know you're probably already asking a bunch of other sonographers and stuff like that. You know, get your questions answered. I mean, nowadays it's so much easier to get answers yeah. than it was before. So, you know, kind of be prepared with, I know you love anatomy and physiology already, mm -hmm. so that's great. You know, have your books, kind of like look at images and keep your mind refreshed with the anatomy and physiology because really ultrasound is all anatomy. Just kind of research your schools. Make sure when you ask these schools about their programs, see mm -hmm. if they can let you sit for board exams. I know there's a whole battle of non-accredited versus accredited schools, mm -hmm. but just talk to the schools, see what they can offer you, you know, find out if you can find somebody who has already graduated from that program and is successful in their career, making sure you know that this field is competitive. So you have to have yeah. multiple options. I mean, I was really lucky just kind of like switching over from nursing and going into ultrasound, but in all other cities and states, like sometimes it's a little bit harder. List out your options. Okay. I yeah. want to echo or I want to do general I want to do vascular here are the schools that are offering that to me okay now I'm going to ask the schools what are the requirements how do I get in how many people do they accept a year how does it work just all of that stuff before yeah. you actually choose a school so you know what you're getting yourself into um what are some of the challenges that someone in this role might face lots of challenges <laughs> it's a very challenging job you know, first of all, you're dealing with patients, you're dealing with people who are, you know, in critical condition, patients who are ventilated, especially if you're in the hospital, patients mm -hmm. are vented, and some people are like really, really in pain. So sometimes you have to work your way through with talking to these patients, you know, deciding if this exam is really necessary for this patient, like if they're really complaining, they don't want you to touch them. I mean, you have to be able to talk to the doctors. Yeah. And stuff, like, this patient's not letting me touch them, you know, so I don't think we can get through this. And then you kind of make your decision off of what the doctor says, you know, at the end of the day, the doctor is ordering these exams. So you have to do your best to find what's wrong, but also you have to be able to be confident to know, I see this thing that's going on, or I don't see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then you have to also be able to stand up for yourself and be like, this exam, I couldn't get to this patient because this patient was so combative or they were so irritated or they were mad there are so many situations that you may be put in with this job and it's kind of just like it's a lot and it can get stressful but also you have to be able to know that you're doing your best you, know, you mm -hmm. can only do so much as a sonographer there's going to be a ton of challenges a lot of exams that are hard patients that are hard doctors and nurses who are mean patients who are mean I mean I've seen some doctors yelling at other people it's just it's crazy but yeah. you want to hope that you're not in, in those situations and when mm -hmm. you are you do what's right for you and you do what's best for you and do what's best for the patient uh, how does technology affect this occupation oh well this is a big one I feel like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technology is like really, it's really great. I mean, I've been talking to a bunch of like senior technologists and like back in the day, they would tell me, oh, we'd have to go into the, the like dark room and we had to like print the films or like do like, I don't know, like, you know, back in the day when there yeah. was 
to like computers they were saying like it was just so crazy back then and how hard it was and now you can literally send images from upstairs in the hospital and it goes into the system to the wi-fi mm -hmm. and like it's already on the computer so then the doctor you can just like call them and you're like hey I sent these images over. Can you take a look at them? Or like if you're confused about something, right? You have the machine bedside next to the patient. You scan mm -hmm. them and you're like, what is this? You call the doctor and you're like, hey, can you take a look at these images? Because I really don't know what I'm looking at. Like, yeah. <laughs> you can just see something so crazy. And if you've never seen it before, you definitely need to ask somebody if right. you that help. You know, you do your best to describe stuff, but if you have someone there to help you, you know, right then and there, you can call them and you're just like, look at this. What is going on? And of course, you're not going to be next to the patient. You're going to step out. Yeah. But the machine is <laughs> still right there next to the patient. Mm -hmm. So live time, you can send pictures right away. Technology is just going to grow, like I said, with that whole little probe that connects to a phone. Like, who knows if doctors are going to need us anymore. But, you know, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy though like that they had to like develop or whatever the images and yeah. that's so crazy <laughs> yeah I was like you guys did, you guys did it, like what because you know how x-ray did that too like yeah the film and she was like yeah we would be in there and like sometimes people would like overdevelop them and on accident and then they'd have to do the whole thing over again and I'm like dang <laughs> <laughs> that's so much work <laughs> so much work we're so lucky nowadays <laughs> Um, how does this occupation affect one's personal life? I guess it kind of just depends. Uh, if you are working as a per diem tech or if you're working as a full-time tech, if you have a family or if you are planning on dating, you know, it can kind of interrupt your life because some mm -hmm. of these hours are crazy. When you're working in a hospital, you can work 40 hours. There's on-call shifts, which interrupts your sleep schedule. So mm -hmm. for that, it's kind of dependent on okay, what do you really want? Do you want to be per diem so that, you know, maybe you don't have a family or kids and you can just work whenever you want, whenever you can, make all the money you can? Or do you want to work full time and have, you know, weekends off and be with your kids and be able to spend time with your family or go to church on Sunday? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, depending on what your lifestyle is, you have to either adjust, you know, when it comes to work, because sometimes it's hard to get those full time shifts. Yeah. Okay it's hard to get that really great shift that you want. And mm -hmm. so when you first start off, you have to just kind of accept, okay, being per diem, taking those on-call shifts and working your way up in the in the ladder, I guess. You, you kind of start at the bottom almost when you first start off. So it's really hard. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I hear senior techs telling me like, I put my work in, like I worked all these crazy hours when I was younger and now I am here perfectly on my perfect schedule. Yeah. And one day, That'll be me, you know, we may all have a perfect schedule, but right now my hours are all over the place and, you know, I don't have kids. So it's kind of easier for me to like, just work whenever and like fit everything else around it. But yeah. for some people, that's not the case. And so it can really affect your personal life. If, it's, if you're working too much and you don't give yourself a break, mm -hmm. or if you're not working enough and you're not making enough money to, to sustain the lifestyle that you want, and it's kind of hit or miss yeah. on how you how hard you want to work, how much you want to work, yeah, and, right. and like the kind of lifestyle that you have. Or how has the pandemic changed or affected your occupation? Wow, yeah, the pandemic, I forgot, we're in a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, so last year, the pandemic, right, was March 2020, mm -hmm. and then I worked my last shift in March, because I actually didn't work for three months. I actually, it was like three to four months. It was because I'm a per diem tech. Patients weren't coming to the hospital and it wasn't as busy as it is now and normally. Full-time techs were getting cut. Full-time techs were leaving. Like they weren't making their money, you know? And so it's like, why bring us in? Because they're not getting their money, right? We didn't work for a few months. But then when I did come back, you know, that's when, during that time, I, I got a second job at the outpatient place because I needed to work. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> it was just crazy. And so... I got a job with the outpatient place. And then, of course, when you get a new job, your hospital is like, okay, you can come back. So I worked two jobs during that second half of the year, like 
October, December, December. And we're still in March now, so a couple of months into the new year. And really the pandemic has changed the way everyone does things. Everything's there's just so many more restrictions and so many mm-hmm. more things you have to do. I mean, we're pretty much doing the same thing we were doing before, but now we're just like even more careful. Like we were careful before, but now we're like even more careful. Yeah. Like yeah. more precautions and whatnot and like safety guidelines or whatever. So yeah. And like, even before we didn't wear masks all the time in the hospital, mm-hmm. we didn't wear masks all the time, but now you have to, when you walk in every single day, they, they get your temperature, you have like a fever, they send you home. Now there's obviously COVID patients, right? So there's like the COVID yeah. floor. And when you're in the COVID floor, you're like, depending on how the patient is, you know, you have to like put a, a what's called a papper on and it's like a space helmet almost. And it's just, you just feel like you're in space because it's so loud and you hear the air like blowing in your ears, but you mm. still do your job. You still do your job. Yeah. You still do the same thing that you would have done if that patient was not COVID. You still mm. Same thing. At first, it was really, really scary. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's still very, very scary for many people, but it's kind of been kind of like the same as before, because before we had tuberculosis patients and like airborne patients. So we would wear certain things when you go into those rooms, but now it's like much more rooms, much more patients where you have to yeah. wear the proper things. And yeah, it's been a lot of the pandemic also. We're not just, we're not like you know, constantly with COVID patients, but we do get, mm-hmm. and then you, in the ER, you don't know who has COVID, right? They're coming yeah. in the ER, you don't know what if they do it, have COVID. So you just really have to be cautious and clean a lot and wash your yeah. hands a lot. I mean, we were washing our hands and hand sanitizing before, but now it's like 10 times more, like even a lot. Like a lot of us are having like really dry cracked hands because of how much we Yeah, I even do from like doing it at school so much. <laughs> I have a couple more questions left. Mm -hmm. So this is still about COVID. Do you see any permanent modifications to your occupation, to your field due to the pandemic? I think the mask wearing thing, I think it may stay, I think for a long time, because before we weren't required to wear masks Mm -hmm. and we're only required to wear masks during flu season if you didn't get the flu shot. So during flu season, you had to wear a mask unless you had the flu shot so like on our badges there's little stickers that say Mm -hmm. if you got the flu shot or not and like if you didn't and someone saw it they would like point at you like where's your mask yeah and now you know masks are like the normal everyday thing so i think that may be implemented of course the whole cleaning the pappers everything that's like brand new and stuff that they put in place you know with these restrictions and stuff i think Mm -hmm. today because of course it's lessening the spread and we have to do whatever we can to prevent spread of any infection. Anything, yeah. Yeah, just so. To keep everyone safe, so. Right. And so I think this was kind of like <sighs> the industry, you know, kind of just like, okay, we need to make sure we're being vigilant and mm-hmm. do what we can to help save others because we, we don't wear these masks just to save us. Yeah. We wear these masks to help save others too, right? I'm wearing this mask because I don't want to spread anything to you. And so I think that will stay. <laughs> is there any other like training besides what is included in like whatever program I take at whatever school? I know you said job shadowing, but is there like anything else? Like to prepare you for? Yeah. Mm, honestly, no, I don't, I wouldn't say there's like, I mean, cause you're going to get all of your learning essentially from your program, the lab and the clinical prior to that. All you can really do is job shadow, perhaps get a job somewhere else. If you're like, say you're in a waiting process, you're like just waiting to get in. There are other things you can do, like become a phlebotomist, work with EKG, work as a scribe, work somewhere in there in the hospital or in a office, like work the front desk or become an MA. There are so many different things you can do before getting into ultrasound that can help you, but they're not necessary. I think that you really can just go into the program and just be prepared by your clinicals and your labs. Like a lot of people who can't even job shadow, like I didn't job shadow. You can still learn everything that you need to know by just going into the program, lab, clinical. But if you want all that supplemental Extra, stuff yeah. and you have the time to do it, <laughs> like you have a gap year or say you have a whole year waiting to apply. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, little things like say you're doing your prereqs and you want something on the side. Those are things that can help you. I know a lot of scribes that 
actually are in school for something and they're mm -hmm. there following the doctors all day right their scribes are like writing up whatever the doctor says and they're helping the doctor you're literally right next to the doctor and you're watching the er doctors how they do it and mm -hmm. how they talk to patients those little things will help you become a better tech be more aware of the medical field yeah and like introduces you to everything you'll experience like early on so right. that's good I know that the MRI tech that I interviewed on my last YouTube video, mm -hmm. he was a phlebotomist. So what he said was that he would just kind of, you know, because when you're a phlebotomist, you're all over the place in the hospital yeah. and you can see what other techs What's are going doing. on. Yeah. What nurses are doing, what x-ray techs are doing, ultrasound, or even transporters. My friend, he's a transporter in our hospital now. And all they do is transport the patients like from here to there and here to there. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a great job because you're going to see so many people, talk to so many nurses, techs. I saw him in our radiology area and I was like, this is our ultrasound machine. <laughs> oh wow, so this is what you do. This is where you're at. And him just being able to see it, I mean, and be there while he's at work and learn. Mm -hmm. That can be like, oh, what if he wants to do something in x-ray or MRI one day? Yeah. Just by being a transporter and being able to work in the hospital. So those things are really great. That's so cool. <laughs> okay. What are the job prospects or like the growth of the career? Like over the, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> you can usually start off as like obviously a regular sonographer, an ultrasound technologist where you're going to go in there, you're going to scan, you're going to do all the, the work, you're going to up your skills, you're going to be able to have good customer service, quality service, patient care, you're going to be able to write your paperwork, be a great tech. Now, once you're feeling like unfulfilled by that, which hardly I can imagine someone being unfulfilled by this, you know, you can potentially become a lead sonographer or lead tech. So essentially, you're not a supervisor, but you're just almost like you kind of like run run the desk for the supervisor or sometimes the supervisor isn't even an ultrasound person sometimes the supervisor is like an mri supervisor or an x-ray supervisor or just some like random supervisor who's just running the department but the lead tech will be in charge ordering supplies making sure the department is running smoothly mm -hmm. you know making sure your techs are doing what they need to do making sure everything's getting done in a timely manner so lead techs will help you, you know, kind of make things run smoothly. But then there are some places where that's a supervisor's position. So you can be a lead tech or you can be a supervisor. So you can supervise other sonographers. You can be the point of contact when anything's going on. So for me, I'm not a lead and I'm not a supervisor. So mm -hmm. I just go in there and do my job. Yeah. But if I have an issue or a problem, I talk to the lead or I talk to the supervisor. And then if that doesn't fulfill you enough after <laughs> having all that experience as a supervisor or lead tech, you can go up to become a director of the radiology department. Usually in hospitals, there is somebody who's in charge of everyone, right? Mm -hmm. there's, you know, there's x-ray, MRI, CT, nuclear medicine, and there's just all these things under that umbrella of radiology. And you can actually run the whole department. You can oversee everyone. You can be the head in charge, the head boss. And if anything happens, everyone goes to you. you know? <laughs> so that's another thing you can do. But then if you're not somebody who wants to, you know, be a leader or, you know, you just kind of want to like go in there and do your job, there are ways where you can also start your own company. You can start your own mobile company. You can start your own company where you get a bunch of machines and rent out a place and then become contracted. And then, you know, the whole business side of it, mm -hmm. right? Do that. And then you can also become your own contractor and get your own contracts. Like you can work for your own doctors. You can go into a doctor's office and say, hey, I've got an ultrasound machine here. I know you've got ultrasounds for your patients. Instead of sending them out somewhere or mm -hmm. somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. How about I be your sonographer and I do all mm -hmm. the scans for you? So if you want to be independent, yeah. you can do like your own business kind of thing. But then you can also become a teacher, professor, a lab clinical coordinator. You can, there's just like so much stuff you can do in education. You can also work for like ARDMS or the board registries, like up there, those people who write the books, those people who 
like do all the intense teaching stuff, educational mm -hmm. stuff, and all the behind the scenes stuff that makes us kind of like do what we do. Like there's ACR accreditation. Then you can also work on machines. There's just so much opportunity in this field that people don't even realize or think about. Yeah. Like you can learn how to be able to use those machines and know how to function it. And so when a hospital needs help or something breaks down or they need to fix something, mm -hmm. or you teach people how to use these machines. That's also a job as well. Wow. I did not think about any of those. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, there's so much. Um, there's really a lot. People also, also like, they kind of go geared towards nursing, right? Because there's so much more in nursing. Like, to the eye, you know there's a lot. Yeah. There's many kinds of nurses. And you can like move up and do all these things. But in an ultrasound, it's not necessarily like moving up per se, but it's also like there's so many things that you can do with this job. Mm -hmm. Those were all of my questions. Oh, so. really? <laughs> Wait, can I see your nails? I meant to ask you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Can you tell they're lavender? Wait, Those let me turn are the cute. Light. I can kind of see. Let me see if I can. There you go. Oh, they're cute. I took mine off. I kind of miss them. I regret taking them off. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my gosh. So my appointment was originally at 2.30 and then they were like, oh, we made a mistake. Three, can you, can you please come in at 3.30? I was like, yeah, that's fine. I just have to be home by five. <laughs> but it was like really busy in there and she was telling me that like because it's the holiday weekend that a lot of times on holiday weekends they're really busy I didn't even realize I was like oh my gosh it's already Easter yeah it's Easter oh my gosh <laughs> so I was like yeah I'll go with light purple I'll send you a picture so you can see it oh yay thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much so I appreciate it yeah. so much of course if you ever have any questions you know you can contact me and I that's what I tell everyone all the time like I'm here for you guys and mm -hmm. I really don't mind doing any of these things as long as I have like a spot in my schedule like I <laughs> yeah. will put anyone in there and I'll talk to you because I really love talking to you guys and getting to know each one of you and helping you guys out because if I had someone like that too during my journey it would have been a lot easier I think yeah I can imagine yeah I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it so much thank you for oh you're welcome thank you <laughs> Well, I'll definitely see you and you let me know if there's anything else you need me to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.